द मोमेंट वेन यू रियलाइज वट इज मेड फॉर यू एंड वॉट यू आर मेड फॉर इज अ मोमेंट वेन यू लूज द फियर ऑफ गेटिंग फेलियर हेलो गाइज दिस इज विक्रांत सिंह सेंगर प्रस्यूंग एम बी बी एस फ्रॉम जे एम सी ग्वालियर नाउ प्रेजेंटिंग अ ब्यूटिफुल लेक्चर ऑन द ग्रेट टॉपिक दैट इज प्रैक्टिकल सर सो लेट्स गेट स्टार्ट pathology and medicine about main goals right anatomy discussed here physiology i discussed here and the pathology whole portion coming from pathology at the my and this is what the medicine is and basically the presentation of the patient is being explained by me under the medicine right in the in this part 1 so and in the part 2 diagnosis will be there then treatment will be there and as i have discussed in my introduction video that histopathology radiographs diag uh, lab diagnosis of the microbiology and the additional workups coming from the me medicine that will be discussed here and from the treatment part we know the physiological basis number 1 followed by the drug classification followed by individual drugs followed by the schemes for uh, the drug given and followed by surgery and if any medicine uh, scheme or wg classification resume given in the book of uh, microbiology will be discussing right there done so this is what the overview and uh, coming into the first thing that is the physiology basically physiology is concerned about the physiology of acid secretion starting it so this is what our uh, think of interest and you know that uh, you know reminds me and that you know stimulates me and uh, stimulation of vagus nerve will be there this is what the vagus nerve is vagus nerve and that will be exciting the ganglia the gut ganglions right and uh, augmenting the release of ach ach is released here and uh, that will be you know ach and the grp grp is a gastrointestinal peptide and uh, that will be stimulating g cells ach and grp both and that will be stimulating the intergermaphen like cell and both these cells correspondingly release gastrin and the histamine respectively and all these things i mean the gastrin and the histamine both these things along with the ach itself and three things are augmenting the release of the acid from the parietal cells right and uh, only one villain only one opposite guy who is present is the pge2 and that will be acting over prostonide receptors ep3 and decrease thereby decreasing the release of the acid m3 receptors that is ip ip3 dag receptor increasing release of calcium ions inside the cells this is h2 increasing cyclic amp this is the villain decreasing concentration of cyclic amp and that is also increasing calcium ions by ip3 dag mechanism and you know this this and that increasing the acid secretion while that will be decreasing the acid secretion and how the acids been produced this is water this is co2 combining with each other resulting into the formation of h h2 co3 carbonic acid and in the presence of the carbonic anhydrase enzyme and that will be broken into the proton and the bicarbonate okay and the proton is being pumped out by the potassium proton pump potassium proton atp bases and this uh, bicarbonate is pumped out here okay and that is what the basic mechanism with respect to the physiology is concerned coming on to the next one that is the anatomy portion the basic portion it is the stomach basic portion with respect to the information regarding the stomach volume newborn that is 30 ml one ounce puberty 1 liter 2 to 4 liters at the adult and location of the stomach is that is what the epigastrium umbilical region and the left hypochondrium so uh, left hypochondrial region and the epigastrial region and what the umbilical region and locations let me tell you about the parts of that this is cardia and the pylori let me draw this firstly swiftly okay so this elevated portion that is that is the fundus right and this whole portion this portion that whole portion that is the body right and now i can tell you this portion that is the pyloric antrum and this pyloric canal is what the pylori itself pylori itself right and we know the anterior the superior surface and the posterior one is the posterior inferior surface and the openings and the cardiac opening and the pyloric opening right there okay so cardiac opening is like that okay this is the attachment point this is sternum 
okay this is sternum that is attachment point to seventh cartilage and that is 2.0 centimeter apart only at the left left side and this is the medial line median line it is and this palari is just 1.2 centimeters apart from the median line okay <sighs> present on the level of the l t11 l1 we know coming from the next one the peritoneal relationships of that right this, this is the stomach and you have to focus on the lesser momentum this is lesser momentum we have to focus on that right hmm. this is lesser momentum we have to focus on that and in next figure that is so much clear that the in this is stomach that at the right point we are just having the same lesser momentum but that is ended here this is the right free margin of the lesser momentum are you just able to appreciate this the right free margin of the left lesser momentum containing the three things proper hepatic artery the bile duct and the portal vein this is the triad and this triad will be entering to the liver at the porta hepatis okay so this is uh, you know at that point we are just having that triad and that will be reaching up to the liver this is basically the lesser curvature of the stomach over which the lesser momentum is attached that is greater curvature of the stomach over which greater momentum is attached the same two folds are just covering the stomach as such and that will be coming downwards reflecting themselves resulting into the four layered structure this four layer structure is one two three and four this four layer structure that is called as the greater momentum that is a greater momentum okay those two layers first of which is ascending another one is reflecting and this is the space behind the peritoneum called this retroperitoneal space this whole space is retroperitoneal space in which pancreas is present the duodenum basically the vertical and d2 and d3 are just present this is the d3 the horizontal portion of that and that is present here and uh, such kind of folds 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 are present enclosing the mesentery small bubble uh, just folding the genunum and the ileum and this is the folds covering the transverse colon and that is a fold called as the transverse mesocolon and this is the reflection and which is reflected here and re and directed upwards and a kind of pouch is present between the rectum and the bladder this is urinary bladder right a recto vesical pouch recto vesical pouch is there recto vesical pouch is written as well so this is what is to be learned right now hmm. this is the story of right side what is the story of the left side these two reflections are just present at that point it is enclosing the spleen and goes in the backward direction right so thereby forming a ligament here and ligament here that is called this uh, gastro spleen ligament and that ligament present between the spleen and the kidney that is called this the leno renal ligament or spino renal uh, ligament okay so this is what the peritoneal relations of the stomach will be now coming on to the visceral relations of the stomach at the anterior portion we are just having the transverse colon transverse mesocolon uh, the liver and the diaphragm right and the posterior portion we are just having diaphragm but apart from that we are just having such structures called as the stomach bed right in the stomach bed here the most bottom structure is the transverse colon and its tra and transverse mesocolon so this is what the transverse colon transverse mesocolon will be then this is our so spleen to which splenic artery supplying okay so this is splenic artery and under which pancreas is present right this is the splenic artery this is what the pancreas is and that will be supplying the spleen okay and behind which the transverse mesocolon present and that is the transverse colon right and at that position we are just having the left kidney and over which the left adrenal gland is present so all these structures are just present in the uh, uh, in the bed position of the stomach called as the stomach bed so what are these structures the spleen splenic artery spleen sometimes not present it's not mandatory for spleen to present in the stomach bed spleen is there splenic artery is there pancreas is there transverse mesocolon is there 
transverse colon is there diaphragm will be there and we will be having the kidney which kidney left kidney and its left supra renal gland will be there once we are just done with respect to the relations coming on to the uh, arterial supply that is the main artery that is the celiac trunk coming from the abdominal aorta just given three branches three branches number one is the uh, the gastric artery this is the gastric artery number two is the splenic artery cell splenic artery number two number three is the common hepatic artery number three okay and that common hepatic artery this is converted into two branches number one is the proper hepatic artery okay and that is the gastro duodenal artery okay two branches are there and uh, both the branches ha are just having their own significance in order to provide these sub branches the branch coming from the gastro duodenal artery that is the right epiglobic artery you can appreciate this this is the right epiglobic artery number one and that is that is our proper hepatic artery from which this branch this is the right gastric artery is just being supplied so this is right gastric artery this is right gastro epiglobic artery same here the splenic artery provides the short gastric branches and long left gastro epiglobic artery so this is what the arterial supply the stomach is coming on to the next one that is we have discussed this thing coming on to the what venous drainage of that taking the color to be wallet and we have to focus on three things this this that and that that is the basic structure that is the splenic vein that is superior mesenteric vein that is the portal vein and that is the inferior mesenteric vein same you just able to appreciate this inferior mesenteric vein is there this horizontal splenic splenic vein is there horizontal splenic vein is there vertical splenic uh, the superior mesenteric vein is there and at the point at which splenic vein is draining at the superior mesenteric vein that is converted into the portal vein so this is portal vein and you know the two branches this is the left gastric vein this is right gastric vein left gastric right gastric vein which is there next one is here comes the duodenum mm -hmm. Uh, the f we have to discuss the first part of the duodenum. Duodenum is what? Initially, that is horizontal, followed by its vertical portion. The again the horizontal portion and its slight vertical portion, right? Mm -hmm. And from here, that will be connecting with the stomach, and that is what the jejunum is. And this is what the D1 is, D2, D3, and this is D4, right? The length of this is. 2 inches, 3 inches, 4 inches, and 1 inches. Total counting 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus 1. And the counting will be 10 inches. Meanwhile, 25 centimeters. We all know the length of the duodenum is 25 centimeters, which is proven here. Done. Now coming on to the relationships of that first part. Relations of, of first part. Right. Let me prove this is the duodenum first part. Behind which three structures are present. Let me show where we have seen that thing previously. Right there. Yeah. Yeah. This is what the duodenal duodenum is, and behind which this is the first part of duodenum. Okay. So this is the duodenum behind which three structures are present, and when the D two, the D two will be retroperitoneal draw d2 here and the horizontal part like that right horizontal part to be like that and again the vertical portion d4 this is the d1 d2 d3 d4 so at the posterior portion we should have this triad and the anterior portion we should have liver let's prove ourselves that we are just wrong or right yeah yeah the first portion and the anterior and superior portion we are just having liver and posteriorly we are just having this triad as we have seen earlier and we have seen this section as well we have proven that posteriorly three things are present anteriorly liver and the caudate lobe of the liver is present 
and the gallbladder as well. Done. So this is what the first part of the duodenum is. Coming on to the second portion. The second portion, as we have discussed, okay, the second portion, right, anteriorly and posteriorly. Posteriorly, we will be having the left margin of the right kidney and the inferior vena cava, right? So just testify for yourself whether we are correct or not. Left margin in the right kidney, and apart and apart from that, it is having the inferior vena cava as well, and the psoas muscle as well. Okay, so we have seen in that diagram as well the posteriorly, we just having the le uh, the what the left margin of the right kidney. Apart from that, the inferior vena cava. So it's proven here as well. Anteriorly, we just having liver, transverse colon, transverse mesocolon, and the few portion of the bowel as well. Discussed in second D two. Coming on to the D3. D3 is a horizontal portion. This is a horizontal portion. And which is actually sandwiched between the two things. Number one is the abdominal aorta. This is abdominal aorta. And giving the branch of superior mesenteric artery. And this is the what? This is D3. This is sandwiched between the superior mesenteric artery and the aorta. So anteriorly, superior mesenteric artery, posteriorly aorta. Testify. And so anteriorly superior mesenteric artery and vein vessels, posteriorly we are just having the abdominal aorta and the right and the right direction we are just having the inferior vena cava. Just watch from the horizontal section. This is what the D3 is. This is D3. Okay. So posteriorly we are just having aorta and the inferior vena cava and the portion of the left kidney as well. Okay. Anteriorly. Uh, anteriorly what we are having is yeah this sandwich this superior, superior mesenteric artery this is anteriorly that is posteriorly the fourth part the ascending portion what we are having is the aorta this sh let me tell you where is that this is d4 and just posterior to this we are just having aorta and sympathetic chain as well and the left kidney too you see same thing in this diagram posteriorly having aorta sympathetic chain and you know basically this in inferior mesenteric vein simple simple and the most important thing that is a ligament of traits the suspensory the suspensory ligament of traits right and that will be connecting a connection between the diaphragm and the junction of duodenum and genunum Basically, this is, that is a landmark between the upper GI and the lower GI. Okay, that is a landmark. Remember this. As we discussed earlier, that uh, this is the gastroduodenal artery dividing to the two branches. The number one was right gastroepiploic artery. Second was superior pancreatico duodenal artery. Right. That is superior pancreatico duodenal artery. And this supplies like that, which will get as to most with the inferior pancreatic or duodenal artery coming from superior mesenteric artery that is superior mesenteric artery that drives its inferior branch and that superior branch both will anastomose right so having such kind of blood supply to the duodenum okay so this is what the gas the gastro the duodenal artery dividing into the two branches number one is the right epiploic number two branches superior pancreatic or duodenal and that is inferior pancreatic or duodenal coming from superior mesenteric artery and astomosing here to supply the duodenum and apart from and that is what have been discussed here i'm damn sure you're not supposed to see this sector now see the uh, the histology of this basically let me draw a diagram like that okay is drawing some gross diagrams for you. This is the epithelium. Drawing fast. Like that. Okay. Done. So that is the surface epithelium which is brush bordered. Okay, that is the crypts. That is the crypts. Okay. And that is what is that? That is a glands. That is a cut section of that. The cut section is this okay basically that is present in the form of a tubule a crypt 
script if we are just cutting this and showing like that that will be looking like this and we'll be having those cells present like this this so the same cells they are the same cells this is the mucosa submucosa has another type of this is the muscularis mucosi yeah muscle layer <sighs> another kind of glands are present right another kind of glands and that will be having the basic secretion to neutralize the acidity that will be having the brunner's gland okay that is a submucosa followed by another layer of what of muscle muscularis propria or muscularis externa okay having the circular muscles inside and longitudinal outside Th that is circular muscles and that will be longitudinal muscles okay so muscularis externa and followed by a single layer of serosa somewhere is present somewhere not present in the retroperitoneal regions it is not present okay as far as the stomach histology is concerned i must speak that this layer is absent that is present this is script but that is gastric pits okay let me draw this okay let's make the epithelium here okay and uh, cut section is depicted here what is that what is that the cut sections the cut sections right the mucosa that is a mucosa having just this is the gastric this, this is this is the gast the gastric gland itself this is the gastric gland right and this is gastric gland the, this is the cut section of the gastric glands will be having the same cells what is that there is a parietal cells and chief cells at the base of that what are these these are the foveolar cells or goblet cells the mucus mucin secreting cells okay present there, present at what at the mouth of that and that is present at the neck of that okay and this is what the muscularis uh, mucosi and followed by some mucosa so mucosa will be having you know small uh, vessels and arterioles and what and this is ended here another third layer that is the muscularis externa will be having specialized cell layer that is the oblique muscle cells the oblique muscle cells present here followed by the circular layer followed by the longitudinal layer and followed by the serosa the definite serosa is present here definite serosa since it is covered by the peritoneum that is intraperitoneal organ that's why it should be covered by the serosa done this is basically the histology portion <coughs> anatomy physiology is done coming on to the pathology right <sighs> imbalance what is the ground for peptic ulcers the imbalance between the protective the protective and the aggressive factors what are the aggressives the acid and the enzymes and what are the uh, protective factors three things number one number two number three pre epithelial epithelial sub epithelial that is a pre epithelial factors the bicarbonates resolved in the mucus layer two things pg prostaglandins and the regenerative power of epithelium itself okay and the protective factor epithelial factor and sub epithelially what we are having is the blood supply and the wbc okay that is pre epithelial epithelial that is epithelial Pre-epithelial and sub-epithelial. Okay, done. Coming on to the next one. So, what are the risk factors for the development? H. pylori, NSAIDs, smoking, alcohol, stress, Zollinger Ellison syndrome, viral infection, HHP5. That is HHP5. That is cytomegalovirus and HHP102. Basically, simplex viruses are there, are just present. And that is the burns, which cause, are just one of the causes for that. In shock and ischemia and the chemotherapy and the radiotherapy. Let me tell you the mechanism that is cytotoxic, that is okay, causing decrease in the perfusion. The blood supply is compromised in this case. Mm -hmm. This is blood supply, 
and in this burns you know fluid volume is getting evaporated decrease in the uh, blood volume is present so having the same mechanism to decrease the blood volume and followed by the blood volume decreased and that is cytotoxic of course that is increasing hcl zolling so syndrome the gastrinoma increasing hcl causing the ulcers right stress again volume is lesser due to the release of the endogenous catecholamines decrease in the splank splanking circulation decrease in blood supply decrease in the protection and imbalance is there resulting with this and and that is cytotoxic that is volume decreases and that is having a spatial mechanism right this is the cell this is the cells this is the lumen right this is the blood vessel aspirin is what this cell is like acid this is the acid and this is also acid acid in acid is unionized it is unionized and unionized molecule is just able to cross the membrane so easily so salicylic acid is coming in and accumulating accumulating <clears throat> ph is much lower outside than inside and re relatively basic nature still it is in acidic but still it is acidic but we are having relative basic concentration with respect to outside okay inside in intracellular ph is relatively more basic than the lumen right so it is getting ionized is getting ionized here okay an ionized molecule is not able to leave the cell that is keep on accumulating and irritating the cells done so number one reason that is irritation second reason what do they do they are supposed to uh, decrease the level of pg pg level is decreased irritation is there number one number two irrita pg level is decreased number three they are supposed to decrease the secretion of bicarbonate out of the, out of the cell so the production is decreased up here three reasons causing the and both is lead to and all these things lead to the ulcerations right that's what is causing this we are just remaining with the h pylori that is remaining and that will be discussed in the next slide so guys h pylori is being discussed here h pylori having the four things full harmful things such as the in the form of virulence factors of course will be having the flagella wac a cag a and the b a b a that is an that is adhesion molecule that is a mortality and that will be causing cytotoxicity okay and uh, you know all these aggressive factors will lead to the damage of the cells and damage of which type of cells damage of delta cells secreting somatostatin right so somatostatin is lesser so gastrin release is increased so hcl will be increased and there will be high risk of getting ulceration will be increased here now guys the time comes to discuss the clinical features of that what will be having what we are just having as a feature we are just having the pain on the epigastrium the nature of the pain is burning burning and sometimes it is aching okay location is just epigastrium epigastrium is location of that pain the epigastrium and uh, with respect to the location of the ulcers where it is present on the stomach itself or the duodenum the, the more common the duodenum okay the incidence of h pylori in the duodenal ulcers are 90 percent while in the gastric ulcers that is 70 to 80 percent okay so with respect to in the relation of the pain with respect to food okay and the relation of the pain to the antacids okay and and night pain and the, the heartburn now let me tell you this the heartburn that is more common here and the heartburn in this case that is the less common in the night and the night pain less seen that is more seen here okay and in relation the pain to the antacids there is a prompt relief we are just having the prompt relief wow and that is you know not consistent relief not consistent yeah we can have relief but not consistent that is a prompt that is not consistent relation of the pain to the food and food reliefs reliefs and that aggravates 
aggravates the pain. Basic mechanism is we are just uh, when we are just done with our food, you know, the, the same time as it is being produced, we are just eating things and just as it is produced. So the while eating, pain is enhanced. The patient threatens. So the patient threatens to eat more food. So such patients are weaker, are not obese. While in the diurnal ulcers, when the patient is done with respect to the food, after few hours, he complains the pain. He might think that, uh, yeah, it may be hunger pain. So he further eats something. Okay, so um, he will be just keep on snacking all the time, and that will be obese person. So uh, he will get, he will gain weight, and weight loss will not be there. And weight loss is there in the gastric ulcers, but weight gain is not present in this case. And the vomiting is more common in the gastric ulcers. Okay, and vomiting is less common here. In the melina, melina is the blood during defecation, not during defecation, that is seen in the defecation, okay, and uh, not a fresh blood, rather a tarry, black colored, you know, that is malina is, uh, is not seen more commonly, and that is more commonly seen here. So, we are just done with respect to the clinical features of that thing, and nausea and vomiting is common things, nausea, vomiting, and bloating, what is that? Bloating, so common here. Simple. Coming to the complications part. Gastric ulcer and the diurnal ulcer. Bleeding. What is the source of the bleeding? The left gastric artery. What is the source? The <coughs> gastro diurnal artery. The main source of it. So, uh, how we can manage the gastric ulcers, the bleeding from the gastric ulcers? Basically, that is the most important process. The number one thing is that we can go for the endoscopy guided cautery number one if the if the too much blood is being vomited out what we are just doing is we are going for the massive uh, transfusion protocol via giving six units of packed RBCs six unit of fresh frozen plasma and the six units of platelet rich plasma so that's what is a common thing and both these things okay Followed by, if it is not being settled, then we can go for exploratory laparotomy, weight card, and the ligation of the bleeding artery. Okay, ligate, and then we go, go for the ligation of the bleeding artery. Check. Followed by the perforation, the perforation, that is the stomach. Okay, something is being cut here, and that is what the lesser momentum, and this is. Ended here. That is epiploic foramen. Okay. And whatever, if it is perforated from here, the whatever the content present inside will be going just behind the behind the stomach in the lesser sac. And uh, so the symptoms of peritonitis will be masked. Symptoms of mast. The the pain and, and and the swelling will not be there. That's why it can be complicated further. So risk of complication is getting increased while in this portion, the duodenal ulcer, when there is an ulcer in the duodenum, okay, anteriorly, the ulceration and uh, the perforation of the ulcer will be present and the anterior border of that, okay. So the posterior wall bleeds, the anterior wall perforates, okay. And if it is getting perforated, the air present inside will be present in the, in the peritoneum, so condition will be pneumoperitoneum the, radio the, okay, the radiological signs will be discussed in the next lecture subsequently and that is what the perforation and the perforation now penetration and the penetration will be leading to this the pancreatic pseudocyst right and the same thing is present here right and as the pancreas is present here and whatever the content and the inflammatory fluid inflammation will be there and that that will be poured here and will be causing the destruction of the renal uh, pancreatic parenchyma and resulting in the pancreatic pseudocyst here as well carcinoma risk of carcinoma is so much less here but increased in this case 
risk of customers is getting increased here and the hourglass is come up what is that this is hourglass hourglass due to massive uh, inflammation massive uh, fibrosis structure formation and uh, that will be looking like the hourglass that is the hourglass appearance on the stomach so this is one of the complications of the structure formation of the in the stomach and the last thing is that the gastric outlet obstruction right so our last topic of concern that is the gastric outlet obstruction that is not merely the the obstruction of stomach rather there is a structure formation at the d1 the duodenum so that the content present in the stomach will not getting poured from stomach to the duodenum that's why that is called as the gastric outlet obstruction so mechanism here is acid is being produced here which is not able to reach at the position the chloride concentration and the proton concentration which is uh, which can't be reached up to duodenum and uh, you know repeated bouts of vomiting there is a loss of protons and the chlorides and somewhat sodium is being lost here as well and uh, and, the, and the water as well is getting eliminated so the kidney tries to retain all these things so let me draw the nephron here okay so that is nephron and the body tries to limit by reabsorbing more sodium more chloride here and more water and same thing happens here as well but due to but due to the uh, the channels the potassium channel and the proton channels which are effluxing uh, these ions out of the body there is a final decrease in concentration of potassium okay and uh, the chloride loss is not being compensated so chloride loss is there as well okay and uh, and the proton ions are being lost at the vomiting and the urination as well so there is decrease in concentration of um, uh, protons in the blood as well and there is a loss of protons in the urine so condition is called as hypokalemic hypochloremic metabolic alkalosis with paroxysmal acid urea that is a condition that, and that is what the condition is so this is what the basic thing regarding the etiopathogenesis for that and thank and thanks guys for watching it guys i have posted my notes on my instagram account by the name of integrated medicals if you're just having any query and doubt you can go for the comment section below and uh, if you just want to appreciate my work you can go for that hit the like button for the sake of my motivation don't forget to subscribe pressing bell icon will give me some vibe thank you for watching keep integrating thank you